happy post 4th of July and welcome to another episode of The Modern Moron. Please forgive this lengthy intro as we really cover some ground on this show. We talk about how great local neighborhood 4th of July parties are and how the senator really brought a nice afternoon party to a screeching halt by reading the Declaration of Independence aloud and unasked. Nice work, Senator. We quickly talk about your FRA, or full retirement age. You can start claiming at 62, but you'll get 25 to 30 percent less for the rest of your life. So you might want to wait till 67 and get the full amount. The Senator then confesses he's going on a retreat for married couples. And we all support and commend him for doing that. It's definitely outside his comfort zone. And that's where the growth lies, right? And we wrap up by talking about his dad. Get a little serious. He's in his mid-80s, and the difficulties in caring for and dealing with that situation. It's a subject that's perfect for our demographic, as we have parents who are in need of additional care in the waning years, but may not want it. Tough subject. We'll be talking about it today and in the future. Democrats, Republicans, feminists, and sexists unite as we start the episode by celebrating the U.S. Women's World Cup and their second consecutive championship and their fourth overall. What an achievement. We also get super sexist in talking about how much prettier the U.S. team is versus their opponents. While the senator mentioned Women's Cup champion Alex Morgan as being smart as well, he did not mention why. She attended Cal Berkeley, which is a pretty elite university academically, and she graduated a semester early with a degree in political economy. She has also partnered with Simon & Schuster Publishers to author a series of middle-grade books about 14 soccer players called The Kicks. She is also quite savvy with the endorsements, and back in 2015, she was ranked by Time Magazine as the top-paid American woman soccer player. So yeah, Alex Morgan is definitely paying the bills. When talking about familiarity with the U.S. Men's World Cup team, this moron remembers, quote, that guy on Seattle's MLS team that I thought I knew. That guy was Clint Dempsey, and he retired from soccer last year. I remembered him from the 2010 Men's World Cup. That's how far back I have to go to even recall a face of a Men's U.S. World Cup player. Is that a statement about the U.S. Men's team or about me as a moron? Probably the latter. Hope you're having a great week or weekend, and thank you for sticking with the Modern Moron. As of the recording of this podcast right now, the United States Women's World Cup soccer are consecutive champions and four-time World Cup champions. That's pretty incredible. Sure, they won. They beat what? Who they played? The, the Netherlands. Netherlands. The right. Netherlands. Norway, a moron. They, beat, they won two, two to nothing for USA. USA. Woo! So you, you didn't watch Love the it. game. That was not on your radar, huh? I was in church. Oh, okay. All right. That's that's uh, yes. Praying for the U.S. women's. <laughs> oh, by the way. I got some feedback regarding the last time we talked about women's soccer. Oh, boy. Yeah. Uh, our feedback was that our show is appropriately named, that the women's, as of late anyway, and by as of late since they won their previous to this World Cup, they won in, what, 2014, 2015 World Cup. Okay. They have been generating more revenue than the men's World Cup team. Really? Yes. And yet they are making way less in inferior accommodations, inferior transportation means, inferior pay, and they are have filed a lawsuit. Total BS. Honestly, I had no idea that they were outperforming economically the men. I had no yeah, idea. Generating more revenue since 2014. Whoever filled us in on that, thank you very much. I appreciate that because I thought, <laughs> I mean, could you look at the crowd? I mean, except for the exception of this morning when they won the war, I'm sure that stadium was packed. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It was in France. It was in France, right? It was in Lyon, I believe. Anyway, mm-hmm. wherever it was at, it was probably packed, okay? But, I mean, oh, in yeah. general, I thought, eh, they don't generate the revenue, like like the men's soccer. Oh, yeah, but they do. I stand corrected. If they do... They're studs. That is an awesome team. I mean, yeah. that is like yeah. a, a legendary team. They've won yeah. back-to-back. They've won four World Cups. Right. The only other in men's soccer, and I'm not a soccer fan, but I only can think of Brazil that's made an impact on the game like, remember, I can't think of that word. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Dynasty. A dynasty. They're a dynasty. <laughs> Why does that word escape me? I don't know. Dynasty. I'm going to write it down right now. Dynasty. But you at least pronounced it right more than I would have done. Mm-hmm. That's correct. Uh, I want to ask you a question about this, though. So the president, President Macron, was there. 
from France. From France, yes. The king of the Netherlands, they're a, a monarchy, I guess, was present. Do you think our president Trump should have been there? Uh, yeah. Do you think he would have been there if it was the men's? God, who knows? I don't think so because it's not about, enough about him personally. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, that's a hard one. Then let me ask you this. Do you think Obama would have gone over there for that? For the Women's World Cup? Honestly, I don't think so. You don't think so? Okay. What about... Go ahead. He kind of likes basketball a little bit more than soccer. Okay. What about Bush? Do you think Bush would have gone over there for that? Uh, God, Women's World know. Cup. I don't know. I mean... I just wonder, the way the world regards soccer versus the way we regard soccer is just so interesting to me in that, you know, we're a country of immigrants or have we outgrown that label? No, I think soccer is. I mean, we relate that to all the Europeans that came over to air quotes, the new world, but now we're not a, a nation of immigrants anymore. We certainly don't embrace them. It seems like, and the rest of the world loves soccer. So you would think that we would l love soccer by default, but we don't. We like football. American football and baseball and basketball. Yeah, that's a tough one to break, right? Those those are pretty popular sports. I like soccer. Yeah, I do. I think it's great. I, I think it's a good world sport, right? Everybody, woo, go yeah. soccer, go football. You like watching like the football. soccer game? Um, actually, to be honest with you, I'd much rather watch uh, women's soccer than men's soccer. To be honest with you, I really would. And same thing with basketball. why is that? Because I think women are not as selfish as the men, especially in basketball. When you watch, oh, they don't God. flop as much. They're team players. They're not just out showboating. Plus, I want to say this, since it's established that I'm sexist, I was expecting like, oh, the Netherlands. Hello. Those Nordic countries going to have some good looking players. The United States team had prettier girls on it. What do you think of that? Are they called girls? I, I stand correct. Women, yeah. girls, ladies. They are women. Okay. Do not call They're them They're girl. all girls to me. I'm old enough. I can call any woman a girl, okay? You're a misogynist pig if you say okay. girl. That's all I'm going to say. And get in line, big boy, if you want to meet um, Alex Morgan, because that woman is really good looking. She's Yes, yeah, she's very pretty. And yeah. she's the uh, co-captain. And she's smart. <laughs> what? Uh, I don't doubt all of them are smart, but did she have a, uh, an advanced degree from someplace? No, I just think she's smart. She's pretty. She's pretty. <laughs> I really like her. Okay. That's all I'm going to say about Alex Morgan. Yes, she's very pretty. <laughs> she's the one who did the tea she thing, She did the right? tea she thing. The, Megan like, uh, Rapino. Oh, I'm going to mess up her name. I don't even know who you're talking about. I don't know. Oh, uh, is it Rapino? Rapino. Rapino? Yes. Rapino. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Did I really get that? You right? did. You at no. Just, just I, we need to stop the show for a second. It's Megan Rapino, and you got that it right. Pure luck. Yes, that's pure luck. Pure luck. Tobin Heath, she's pretty. I think Carly Lloyd is pretty. Okay. Personally, I think Julie Ertz, very pretty. Oh, I think it's Rose Lavelle. She scored a goal, like a breakaway goal. It was very. It was um, okay. a good win. Very happy for for the ladies, girls, women, whatever. Do you think we would be talking like this if we were talking about the men's team? About how attractive they are? Yeah, yes. I can talk, I can talk, uh, I can do that. Okay. All right. I can well, talk uh, how good looking a, a guy is. Can you name anybody on the, on the men's team? Can you, name uh, you know who comes to mind team? is the guy, I think he plays for Seattle. He's their forward or scorer. <laughs> that shows how, <laughs> how ignorant I am when it comes to soccer. By the way, the men's team plays this afternoon. Oh, do they do? Or what? Yeah, they play in the Gold Cup, the some something other cup. I don't know. We're idiots. <laughs> Did you listen to the president's uh, speech on the 4th of July? Our army manned the air. It took over the airports. It did everything it had to do. <laughs> no. Why not? Well, I wasn't near a television or radio. What did you do for the 4th of July? It took over the airports. Um, stayed in my little hometown and watched our parade, which actually was a record breaker this year. The parade was about 28 minutes long. That's about hmm, 20 minutes longer than it usually is. <laughs> and you were not in the parade? Oh, of course I was in the parade. I drove the car, you know. Oh, okay. I drove your daughter in the parade that one year. Mm -hmm. Of course I was in the parade. Yes. Did you drive the same vehicle? I drove the 1971 Mach 1 Ford Mustang. 
beautiful car. Yes. Very nice. Yeah, it was okay. nice. The parade was nice. Lots of participants. and uh, I like the local parades. Yeah, no, it was fun. It was it was great. So that's what I was doing instead of watching our military flex its mighty muscle. Well, that wasn't until you could have done that. We're on the West Coast. You uh, did, could have done know. both. What did you do after the parade? Parades at yeah. noon, right? And it's only <laughs> and it's 28 minutes <laughs> long. Afterwards, I actually read the Declaration of Independence to the crowd that I was associated with. And then we... Stop it. We did. I did. I have it. I have it in my car. I read it. It's tough to read. The whole Declaration of Independence. Not that long. How, how many people did you read this to? Well, some people, I don't know if they were listening. Walked away? No, no they stayed just for, you know, because it was the... How many people were gathered to listen to you read the Declaration? Seven. Seven people? Seven or eight seven or eight people yeah <laughs> so <laughs> almost with that? a few more than people that listen to this podcast you had a bigger audience than this podcast has to listen to you read the declaration of independence yes were you reading it in a public place or did you have people tied up were they in your house <laughs> i was at where i where? was at a friend's house and i was reading it outside on their patio D and you just you just said did you clear your throat and say i and now i am going to read the declaration of independence or did you just whip it out of your back pocket excuse me while i whip this out i have a little blue book and it's the constitution and the declaration of independence so i had that with me oh thank god you didn't read the constitution <laughs> and i had that and i read it and you just started reading it aloud yes without yeah. asking permission no I didn't ask for him. I just started reading it. It's important. What do you, I'm, <laughs> Will you I'm just trying to picture this. So what? people are gathered around, just standing around talking. And all of a sudden, this one guy <laughs> starts reading the Declaration of Independence. Yes, that is that, exactly how it went down. Just reading it publicly, not to anyone that, hey, what are the first? <laughs> oh, my God. You, <laughs> you amaze what? me sometimes. And so slowly people started to peel off one by one. Like, I don't want to, I don't want to listen to this. No, you love that about me. I don't give a rip. I don't care if I was the only one listening. I'm going to do oh, it. Oh, trust me. You were. <laughs> probably, that's terrible. It's a declaration of independence. It's a big day. The anyway. declaration of independence is a big day. Yes. July 4th. Yeah. It's the 4th of day. July is a big day. The Declaration of Independence is a document. Yes, but they also declared their independence. And they actually didn't do it on July 4th. I believe it was like the 2nd or the 3rd, but they celebrated it on the 4th. It was all signed. Right. Yeah. Right. Well, it's like saying, you know, Jesus wasn't born on December 24th, no. right? No, but he was born. So don't give me any of your shit. Don't give me any of your Buddhist shit. I don't, <laughs> deny, I don't doubt he was born. I never doubted you on that. <laughs> Wow. Just check it. All right. Uh, do we have any things to cover? Um, do you know what your FRA is? FRA? Full retirement age. My what? Do you know what your full retirement age oh, is? Oh, full ret FRA. Full retirement age. I have never heard mm -hmm. that before. I know what a COLA, like a cost of living adjustment. Yeah. I know. Uh, I have no. Do you know you can start collecting Social Security at 63? I, I thought think? it was two. Oh, Medicare is at 62, right? It, yeah. it might be. 62 or 63, you can start collecting Social Security. Okay. Is that going to be a big part of your retirement, your Social Security? No, not at all. Do you plan on collecting Social Security? Mm -hmm. I would imagine so. Yeah, I have no reason not to. I've put into the system for 40 years, 35, almost 40 years, actually. Yeah. So you plan on making it part of your retirement, not just not the bulk of it. Correct. Right. It's not going to, that, what? I'm not going to be able to live off Social Security. No way. No, no, but it, it, is it going to, what percentage do you, would you say it's going to play? 10%, 25%? I would probably say 10, 10%, maybe 15%. Wow. Okay. Something like that. Yeah. And plus work. I don't want to hmm. quit work. Who wants to quit? I mean, you might want, I don't know. I, I have no reason not to work. I like what I do. And, and if I don't do that, I'll do something else. I have no reason not to mm -hmm. just Retirement seems like such a weird concept to me. Like I get up on a Monday morning and wow, what am I going to do today? That's just the weirdest thing. Why do you thing have to do me. something? That's what I'm. Maybe you should just sit down and relax. I don't want to do that because then I want to keep moving. I want to be active. I don't want to just sit down and relax because when you stop moving, that's when you die, man. You die. Let me ask you this. Stop moving, you die. Yeah. Period. Okay. And do you ever have panic attacks? I had one, <laughs> one time. Besides, uh, you know, Anyone would have a panic attack when you're drowning with a snake no. striking at. No, this them. is when I was drowning. Like, do you have in in your day to day routine? 
Do you have panic attacks? I don't think so, no. I think you're full of <laughs> You think I have panic attacks? I don't. I, I mean, why would I have a panic attack? Oh, Jesus. Never mind. For, there's no point in discussing this because you're not going to be honest now. <laughs> what? That's fine. What, what is it? Mean, Are you serious? I've texted you before. I texted you this very question once. Have you ever had a panic attack? Your response was something to the effect of daily. Really? Daily. Are you sure that was me? Are you sure? <sighs> no, it doesn't matter. I don't want to pursue this. Daily? I mean, I get I get crazy. I don't want to pursue this. I go freaking nuts. <laughs> But I don't consider. I don't know if that's a panic attack. I mean, you I got a call and totally unload stop. on you. This reminds me of wait, when wait, wait, I wait, said wait. something about throwing a baby off a plane, and you, uh, oh, I just, I say, mm, mm, mm. boy, oh boy, I sure get frustrated. But golly, I just sit back and go. I, I don't even know who I'm talking to right now. I get crazy upset about certain things, but I, like what? I don't know if they're a panic attack. You give them something else. Give them another name. I have. I have outbursts. I get angry. I need to unload. I call you up and I just freaking go off about something, right? Anxiety. You have anxiety. Okay. Uh, I'll go with anxiety. Yeah. Then you have an anxiety attack. Okay. What? what okay. Jesus. Why do we have to go through all of that just to get to you saying, okay, anxiety attack? Maybe it is. I don't know. Shit. Oh, <sighs> I'm frustrating, I know. God, you put me through a lot of work. <laughs> like, you're just exhausted right now. <laughs> I am. Just, just talking to me. God, between telling that water polo story and getting you, I mean, <laughs> America, Reed. our two listeners, what I had to go through just to get this motherfucker on the fucking line to do this. I don't want to do this again. I chewed you out already. People probably think I'm, what do you, think I mean. You mean? Not that I, I don't care what people think of. Oh, huh? people think you're mean. That's fine. I am mean. I'm not the nicest person in the world. I admit it. <laughs> but you're a pain in the ass. You said, you said today, okay, we'll do it around 11. 11 o'clock oh, comes and goes. Nothing. I'll give him 10 minutes. 10 minutes after comes and goes. Finally, quarter after, I text you, WTF. Communicate much? Oh, I'm on my way home. <laughs> I text you. Jesus, you're high maintenance. Then you text back an expletive, and then you called me uh, and, and tried to hide behind another family member. My wife, I got to stop it. Hey, guy, we got to stop here. We got So fucking text me and say, hey, I'm running about 20 minutes late. It took over the airport. And I could say, okay. Oh, my God. It's called communication. Ever try okay, it? Okay, okay. I will have, <laughs> I am, next week, you can put this. In the bank, bro. Next week, you ain't going to be on the show. How about that? So you can just relax. Oh, that's, you know, that hurts. Words hurt, bro. <laughs> well, take responsibility and don't Dude, be so hurts. high maintenance and you would be a regular. <laughs> hmm? Go ahead. Regular. I'm very regular, actually. Um, that hurts. That hurts my feelings. Man. What hurts your feelings? The truth? I'm going to talk about this when we do... Our next show. I'm going on a retreat next weekend. Fantastic. What kind? My, it, to improve. I'm going on the retreat with my wife to improve my communication skills. Stop it. Three days. I'm not lying. What is the title? I, please enlighten me right now. I, I love that you're going on a retreat. Hold on. I bet. I'm willing to bet. I'll make you a bet that some meditation will be involved. <sighs> you're probably right. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> and I'm not happy about that. He said reluctantly. <laughs> you want the title of this retreat I'm going on? Yeah, can't. yeah. What? Tell me about it. Let's find out oh, about no, it. You're doing about... something to improve your relationship yes. with your wife? That's pretty... Yes, that's... I am. Yes. And was this your idea or her idea? Um, Mary... no, I'm going to say it's her idea. No. Because I know. Mean... Damn. <laughs> hey, honey, we should go on this retreat. <laughs> Come on. Give me a break. Don't even try to say it was your idea. It's just... It's... <laughs> Fuck you. That's I swear. <laughs> you're not going to say that. I oh, had to so say in it. And I agreed to it. I brought it up. It's my birthday weekend, for God's sake, or close to it. Um, oh. You know, so. Okay. What is the retreat called? Um, simply called Married Couples Retreat. <laughs> That's, That's great. Married Couples Retreat. Yeah. Is there any uh, sort of description about it? It's supposed to be to improve your communication skills with your partner. I mean, that's, that's, well, I think I'm, why am I not invited? 
Well, <laughs> I'm kind of a partner in here. I'm like your work wife. You are. You are. I'm looking this. Uh, yeah, you are. But I'm a little worried about going, actually. <laughs> really? What are you worried about? What do you con- what concerns you? What is giving you anxiety? Um, anxiety. Uh, uh, well, you, I, I don't know, bro. I, it's really hard for me to talk about right now. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> okay. All right. We got lots of things to talk about. Yeah, I know, but I'm going to. So um, I would like to talk about your dad at some point. Oh, yeah. That's a whole, that's a whole other episode. This is one angry dude. And I don't want to, I don't want to spend my last years as angry as I am today or yesterday. It's like, you know what I mean? It's like, yeah. I want to be around my kid. I want to be around children. I want to be around puppy dogs and not getting angry at everything like what's the point god that's gonna be really tough yeah it, that'll be tough for me no it won't be tough for me to talk about bro i just feel bad for him i feel really bad i do too i think you should write him a letter i think you should write him a letter like the letter i wrote my dad a letter my dad was losing his hearing and i wrote him a letter telling him how much we missed him right. during the holidays we gather he wasn't participating in conversations and he's a kind of, he was a kind of a funny guy, but he couldn't hear it. I could tell he couldn't hear it. He would say, yeah, oh, oh, okay. And I could tell he didn't hear what was said. So he just, you know, play along, but not comment. Right. And I said, we miss your participation in conversations. And that resonated with him. Like maybe you could write him a letter saying, dad, I miss the dad that used to joke around with me. I miss the dad that didn't always have to talk about politics mm-hmm. i miss the dad that used to make jokes and, and enjoyed his grandchildren because that's what he's going to miss out on right yes and you know what those you know what those kids are going to remember they're not going to remember all of the good times they're going to remember it right at the end right when he's just angry yeah. at the world pissed off at the world man he really is pissed off I, and i can relate to that because i'm usually pissed off at the world and i don't want to be that way what's the point you got i've got a 10 year old daughter yeah, is- what there's nothing better than that she, I taught her how to rollerblade over this weekend. That's awesome. And, you know, my she does not show me affection. She'll give me a, an obligatory hug because I tell her I won't give her a treat unless she gives me a hug. So I literally <laughs> Wait, have to on. bargain uh, for it. You have to tell her you get a treat? Yeah. She'll, well, she'll, she'll, when hug? I pick her up from school, she'll say, do you have a treat for me in the car? I said, well, you didn't give me a hug. Why should I give you a treat? Oh, so okay. so now yeah. she's trained Pavlovian. She comes up and gives me a hug. Where's my treat? It's a Pavlovian response, her showing me affection. Your daughter is a golden retriever, is what you're saying. <laughs> hey, that's a cute dog. Golden retrievers are cute, cute and dog. loyal. But I have one. I love them. I know. <laughs> you know I love them. But I was teaching her to rollerblade, and she was holding onto my arm, like leaning on me as I walked with her as she was learning how to rollerblade. And it was the greatest feeling of she was just leaning on me and holding my arm because she needed being needed. Do you know what I'm, you can relate to that. Totally relate to that. Yes. It was the greatest feeling in the world. And then she started getting better at it and better at it. And she didn't right. need me. I mean, it, that encompasses what being a parent is like in a nutshell, right? You there, you're, you got to hold them. Then you've got to, right. they have to lean on you and then they learn how to do it by themselves and then they skate away. So I want to do those things. I don't want to I do too. be angry I don't at things. I don't, and I, I don't. feel bad for your father in that regard because I can relate to him. I guess that's why I feel empathy towards him. There's just so much anger. He's coming to, uh, I don't know. I shouldn't say he's coming to the end of his life. I don't know. Maybe he lives another. Well, we're all coming to the end of our life. Every day. Yeah. <sighs> I don't think, do you think he thinks about that day by day? Well, I've got to, <laughs> my dad used to say, this would piss my mom off. He would say, he'd come home, <laughs> he'd buy a pair of shoes and he'd come home. He goes, well, that's the last pair of shoes I'll ever need to get. <laughs> like, I'm going to die soon. Won't need another pair of shoes. He'd say that. That's the last hat I'll ever need. That's the last pair of pants I'll ever need. My mom would be like, would you please <laughs> stop? That's pretty funny. That's pretty funny. <laughs> I, I could see your old man saying It's funny, that. but he was like serious. Like, that. Wow. Oh, uh, it's funny. <laughs> okay, Dad, thanks. <laughs> thanks. I guess some people do think about that, right? That that's the last time they'll ever have to do something, right? If it, you know, lasts for a long time. Like I may I may never have to buy a new pair of shoes ever again. Or I think we should strategize to come up with a way for him to embrace his he has great grandchildren, doesn't he? Yes. Yeah, several. 
Man, yes. that's awesome. Yes. How old are his great grandchildren? Would you consider having him on as a guest? <laughs> oh my it god. It would be I don't think so. Really entertaining. I don't honestly. Think so. It would be it would be entertaining. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> it ha- it would I mean, could the two we'll 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 talk okay. about it offline. All right. We you might want to just and if it d- doesn't work out then you just toss it, right? It's 30 minutes of waste of time, but <laughs> I budgeted for 4 hours a month on this on the plan that I have, which I could bump it up for him, but he could he could burn through 4 hours. <laughs> yeah, remember? <laughs> that guy could talk, man. And the problem is it's right. not a discussion. It's right. he doesn't right pause to listen and there's no exchange it's just a one-way conversation <laughs> i know and then you end up just thinking how which is what you did to me the last time i saw him hey dad tell the old man about why you've been banned from home depot and then i just had to sit there and listen to that story and think how am i gonna gnaw my leg off so i can get out of this coyote trap do you remember me standing behind you where you couldn't see me and i was like yeah had my arms up in the air i'm like <laughs> yeah yeah yeah, that was great. Thanks for doing that. <laughs> Classic. Right. I'm, I'm oh, tired of talking stuff. to you. <laughs> <laughs> That's tough stuff. And I think writing a letter as a means of communication to a loved one can be a great way to communicate. It forces you to be thoughtful about your message. It gives you a chance to get out your full message without interruption. And it gives a person who may have listening skill deficiencies a chance to digest the message before responding. The moron supports the senator in his struggle with dad and in his marriage retreat as well. Although I still think I should get to go on that trip. As always, thank you for listening and we'll see you next time.